looks like you are very happy. Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to have the Bible study with you today. The grace of God will flow into your life. It will turn your life around. No more tears. No more sorrow. This word will enter this place. Where will the word enter? Inside your heart. You'll never be the same again. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible story tonight. Thank you for your happy people, joyful people, blessed people, favored people. We're asking, Lord, tonight, your grace will flow from your throne. And flow into every heart and every life in Jesus' name. We thank you for our leaders. Thank you for our workers. Thank you for everyone here. All our members and all our invitees. How many invitees we have today. Wonderful. Lord, we pray that nobody will miss your blessing tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody will take something wonderful home. Turn our lives around. Bless your people tonight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Last week we started the study of the book of Revelation. And for those who are not here at that time, the book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible. And we looked at chapter 1 and we studied verses 1, 2, and 3. Look at this. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly, very shortly, come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who be a record of the things of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now in verse 3, blessed is he that treateth, you'll be blessed. And did that hear of this, the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. That's the introduction to the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation reveals, it exposes, it unveils, it takes the cover up. It's not a hidden mystery. It's not something you can't understand. Otherwise, it will not be revelation. It is revelation because it is revealed unto you. And it's the revelation that unveils the glorious exaltation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at that verse 1. It says, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Here we have the Lord Jesus Christ revealed unto us as the glorified Son of God. Not only that, as the mighty Lamb of God. As you look at the book of Revelation, you'll find Jesus Christ there as the Alpha and the Omega. You'll find him as the powerful lion of the tribe of Judah. That no mountain can stand before him. And no power can stand before him. And every chain in your life, every shackle in your life, this Lamb of God and the lion of the tribe of Judah, he'll break every yoke. If you follow Jesus Christ, you will find he will deliver you from all attack and all evil in Jesus' name. He's the reigning king of kings and he's ruling lord of lords. He's the judge on the throne of the whole universe. He's the bridegroom of the church of the saints. As we look at chapter 1, look at that chapter 1 again, verse 3. It says, blessed is he that readeth. There's a blessing here for the person that reads. That is, you come to study the book of Revelation with us. You read it yourself. And then it says in verse 3, And they that hear, number one, he that readeth. That's actually the preacher. You see, in those days, everybody did not have a copy of the Bible in their hands. Because the printing had not started at that time when John wrote. So the word will be given to the leader. 
minister, the pastor, the minister, the preacher in that church. And he will read. And just because we're leaders and we're reading the word, reading to the people of God, he says, I am blessed because I read. I am blessed because I preach. I'm blessed because I'm a pastor. You think that only the members have the blessing? We pastors, we have the blessing. And the pastors here today, the blessing is coming upon your life. Blessed is he that readeth. When you read the word of God to other people, a mother reading to the children, a father reading to the children, an uncle reading to the junior ones, or anybody reading to another one, the blessing of God will never stop in your life. And then it says, and they that hear. That is when the word of God is coming forth, you hear that word. You accept that word. It says, there will be blessing on them. Which means then, the revelation is to be read. The revelation is to be heard. And then it says, and they that keep the words that are written in this prophecy is given to us. It's revealed to us. It's said to each of us so that this prophecy we're looking at, number one, is personal. Number two, it is prophetic because it says there are things that will surely come to pass. But number three, it is preparatory. It is to prepare us for the kingdom of God. As we look at chapter two, you will find it's talking about the people that overcome. He that overcometh, I will grant to eat of the tree of life. And it goes on and on telling us about he that overcometh. You come to the final chapters, chapter 21, chapter 22. It talks about the people that overcome. And it says they will inherit all things. What's the book for? It is to prepare you to be an overcomer. You'll be an overcomer. Because it is, number one, personal. Personal. It's personal to you. And so you'll not toss this to another person and say, this sage, this is for me. I said this is for me. And then it is prophetic because it's telling you about the destiny of the universe and the destiny of the world. And it's telling you about your destiny as well. If this is personal, if this is prophetic, if this is preparatory, what am I to do with it? What are you to do with it? Number one, study its precepts and obey them. As you go through the book of Revelation, you'll find the commandments, you'll find the warnings, and you'll find the precepts. Study its precepts and obey them. Number two, secure its promises and believe them. There are promises in the book of Revelation, and they're given to you so that as you read these promises and you believe them, the promises will be yes and amen in your life. Yeah. I thought somebody there will say amen. Yeah. Seek its prophecies and wait for them. Already it tells you that these things are so come, going to come to pass. They will be fulfilled. And you seek those prophecies, read them, study them, learn about them, underline them, seek its prophecies and wait for them. Search its pages. You'll find out chapter 1 to chapter 22. There are many pages here. Search its pages and hope in God. That is, as we look at this and God says, the kingdom will eventually come to the very shoulder of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because Jesus will reign, your Lord will reign. Your master will reign. All the people that are reigning today, maybe you don't appreciate all the laws. This one is happening, that one is happening, and things are not perfect today in the world. But that time, the era of perfection is coming. Because the perfect son of God is a perfect king, is a perfect lord, and is the one that rules and reigns in righteousness, and you search its pages, and you hope in them. That's the reason why we're studying all this. That's why we're looking at all these commandments of the Lord, all these words of the Lord, and I pray that it will benefit your soul in Jesus' name. Seek its principles and practice them. As we look through the book of Revelation, the principles will find the standard that he reveals to us and what he reveals to us, and he will say, that's for me, I'm going to live by that. It's a principle you must stand on, a principle that you must uh, practice. And now you see its pictures. 
As we look at the book of Revelation, it's like it's a book of pictures. It gives us illustrations and gives us principles and gives us pictures and talks about this, about that, and it's so beautiful and colorful. It is pictures. See those pictures and interpret them. Interpret them. When it talks about uh, the beast, what does that mean? When it talks about the living creatures, what does that mean? And when it talks about the stars and about the candlestick and about the angel of the church in Ephesus and in Philadelphia and all the places, what does that mean? You will see its pictures and you interpret them. Then you sense you sense its purposes and fulfill them. It has a purpose. There's a reason why the Lord has given us the book of Revelation. And then you find out why is this given? Why is it there? Why are we studying this? They'll be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. Come back to chapter 1 again and I'm looking at verse 3. It says, Blessed is he that readeth. Blessed is he that readeth. Will you read? I said, Will you read? You're promising the Lord. Will you read? Yeah. Where are you? You'll be blessed as you read in Jesus' name. Yeah. And they that hear the words of the prophecy, they that hear, will you hear? Yeah. Or while the preaching is going on, you'll be sleeping and dozing. Yeah. And then already you're in a dreamland. You're in another place. Are you here with your mind? Yeah. You're here with your heart. Your spirit and your soul, and you concentrate because it says, Blessed are the people that hear the words of this prophecy. Look at this now, and keep those things. That's the beauty of it. You see, when we come to the Bible study, it's not only just, just to read, that's wonderful, and it's not just to hear, that's great, but to keep, to keep, to keep those things which are reaching therein. What does that mean to keep? It means to guard them. When you're giving something that is precious, when you're giving a treasure, and then you're to keep this, keep this, that means you guard that thing, you protect that thing, you preserve that thing. It must not be lost. The Lord has given us his word in our church. We're going to guard it. We're going to keep it. It will not be lost in our hands in Jesus' name. When he says, you keep the words, keep them. What does that mean? It means you treasure them. You treasure them. This is precious. This is priceless. You cannot find it in any other book of literature in the world. It is peculiar. It is unique. And because of its peculiarity and uniqueness, keep it, treasure it. Hold fast to it. Embrace it. And do not let it go. You will not drop it from your hand. Anywhere you go, you and your Bible, you are going there. And you will have the victory in Jesus' name. And you find somebody who says, I'm a Christian. I say, where is your Bible? Who oh, said, don't carry my Bible about you? Because, you know, Bible is supposed to be read on Sunday. Ah, look at him. And he says, a Christian. It's Sunday, Sunday Christian. I'm a Christian every day of the week. I said, I'm a Christian every day of the week. And if you're a Christian, these are the roadmap the Lord has given to us. And he says, keep that thing, treasure that thing, embrace that thing. Look at this. It says, keep them. What does that mean? Actually, it means obey them. Obey the word of God. You hear, you listen, you read, and it says, blessed are the people that keep the things that are written therein. It means you obey them. It means you observe them. Observe them. Don't observe circumstances and the winds that blow and the waves that come and the difficulties and the challenges of life. This is what we are to observe. The word of God. It means follow them. That is, this is going before you. The Bible will lead you to heaven. It is given to lead us to glory and to the promised land. It is like the pillar of cloud. It is like the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel and led them out of Egypt. Somebody is coming out of Egypt today. And then led them to the promised land. It is given to us. Therefore, you will follow this pillar of fire and pillar of cloud. The word of God will never mislead you. It will lead you to the right place and to the right person. It means to labor by them. When it's 
says, keep them, keep the word. That is, you're obeying it, you're following it, you're observing it, and you're living by them, you abide by them. You say, this is my partner, this is my helper, this is my comforter, and I'm going to abide in the word of the Lord every time. Conform your life to them. That's what it means when it says, keep them. You conform your life unto them. Keep them. The other side of it is that don't neglect them. Don't abandon them. Don't cast them off. Don't separate from the word of God. It means you will not subtract from it. You keep. You protect. You preserve. And it's like contending for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. You will not change. You will not modify. You will not mutilate. You will not subtract. You will not add. You will take it and beware of contradictions. If anybody comes to you and he breaks another sin, not according to this uh, 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 I've got the truth. I buy the truth. I sell it not. I will not throw it away. I said I will not throw it away. It is mine and it is yours. It will lead us to glory in Jesus' name. We're looking at verses 4, 5, and 6. Look at verse 4. It says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before the throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the false begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us. Somebody there, God loves you. Unto him that loved us. When you are in the dungeon, when you are in difficulty, when you are at a crossroad, remember there's somebody up there in heaven, he loves you more than you can tell. And it says unto him that loved us, what he did do when he loved us, he tells us that he washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he has made us slaves, he has made us peasants. He has made us victims. Tell me what it makes. He has made us kings. You know, the way some people carry themselves, you think they carry the whole world on their shoulders. And they say, it's not an easy road. I can't imagine a king, I can't imagine even a governor in any of our states going on the road and they say, it's not an easy road. Have you seen that? Why is it that Christians, they go about, it's not an easy road, sometimes on the valley, sometimes on the mountain top, thank the Lord, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're carrying a heavy load tonight, you're going to drop that load here. Because he has made us to be kings and priests unto God and his Father. And he says, tell me, to him be glory and dominion, how long? forever and ever and the church said amen something is going to happen in your life today we're looking at our study tonight and it is sufficient grace and abundant peace from our redeemer sufficient grace and abundant peace from our redeemer i'm dividing the message to three parts number one the grace and peace from god the grace and peace from God. Because it tells us in verse 4, it says to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. Grace and peace from God. Number two, the guiltlessness. No guilt, no condemnation. The guiltlessness and priesthood of the godly is washed us. He has cleansed us. He has forgiven us. He has thrown our sins in the depths of the sea. And there is no condemnation now to those that walk in the spirit who are in Christ, who are not walking after the flesh. The guiltlessness and priesthood of the godly. That's what he tells us in verse 5, in the latter part of verse 5. He says unto him that loved us. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests unto God and to his father. And then he tells us now, point number three now, is the glory and the power of our God. The glory 
and the power of our God. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's come to point number one. Point number one, the grace and the peace from God. We're coming to Revelation chapter 4. Uh, chapter 1. I'm reading, from, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. That is, uh, John was uh, writing to the first re recipients of this revelation. The people that the revelation was sent to primarily at the beginning. There you're asking the question, if it was written to the seven churches of Asia Minor, why are we reading it? Why are we bothered about its content? And look at chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 7. It says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Yes, to the seven churches of Asia Minor. But he that has an ear, let him hear. It's talking about the individual. It's talking about you. Talking about me. And it's saying that this revelation is not just for those seven churches. It's for everyone that has an ear to hear. Thank God I have an ear to hear. Look at chapter 2, verse 11. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. It's saying it to the churches, and it's applicable to everyone. And it's available for everyone, and it's revealed to everyone. It's sent and signified unto everyone. He that has an ear, let him hear. Look at verse 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And then come to the end of chapter 2. We're looking at chapter 2, verse 29. He that has an ear. You see what's saying all the time? He's saying it's not just for the seven churches of Asia Minor alone. He's talking to us, everyone. That's why it says, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. We're coming to chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 6. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. And then we come to verse, uh, we come to verse twelve. In verse twelve, it says, "Look at verse, uh, look at verse 12. Well, let us go back. Let go to verse thirteen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches." We're going to look at verse twenty-two. Everybody, you are going to read this one, two, three. Go. You see what the Lord is telling us? He's saying this is not just for Asia Minor. It is for you. It is for me. It is for everyone. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. We're looking at chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 9. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. I'm waiting for you to open the Bible. Hurry up, hurry up. Revelation chapter 13, verse 9. Are you there? Tell me if you are there. If any man have an ear, let him hear. So you cannot come to Revelation and say, why am I reading Revelation? Because it was said to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Come back to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, I'm reading here from verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. To the seven churches which are in Asia. Why seven? You see, if you look at the book of Revelation, the number seven is there all the time. You come to chapter one, seven. You come to chapter two, you're going to find seven. You come to chapter three, you're going to find that number seven. And as you go through the book of Revelation, it comes up on and on because the number seven is the number of completeness. How many days in the week? Seven. And because of that uh, completeness, because of that fullness, because of that entirety, because of that totality, that's why it's right into the seven churches. God chose, the Lord Jesus chose seven of the churches in Asia so that it will represent the whole church in its fullness, in its entirety, in its completeness. And that's the reason why you have the seven there. We're coming to Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. To John, to the seven churches, which are in Asia, grace be unto you. Grace be 
unto you. Uh, you might be surprised. Maybe if you're a reader of the Bible, if you're a student of the Bible, you'll not be surprised. Because, you know, we came into this world, and the first time, the first day you came over here in the world, they gave you water to drink. And then the following day, water. The following day, water. Then you became a teenager, water. Then you become a graduate, water. And you have become a married man, you still need water. And then you are now old and aged, you still need water. And by the time you want to pass on to the other side, you still need water. Water to bath and water to drink and water to do everything you want to do. Your life will not be what it is without that water. The same thing with the grace of God. You come into the kingdom of God by grace. You live in the kingdom of God by grace. You are sustained in the kingdom of God by grace. And whatever you are, whoever you are, you even become a worker and you still need the grace of God. You are now a preacher. You need the grace of God. You are married man, a married woman. You need the grace of God. And until you cross over from the earth, from earth to heaven, we need the grace of God. That's why John is saying, whoever you are, you are reading this, are you young? Grace unto you. Are you a new convert? Grace unto you. Are you a real believer, standing believer? Grace unto you. And are you almost crossing to the other side? How you need the grace of God? As we're about to close your eyes here on earth, and then you pass to the great beyond, it is all by grace. That grace will never stop in your life. We're looking at this grace, and I'm looking at uh, Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, here is where we started. We drank water the first day we came into this world, and we experienced the grace of God the first day we came into the kingdom of God. And that grace continues, it tells us, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Look at this, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Nobody ever gets saved without grace. Nobody ever get saved without grace. As somebody says, I'm good and I'm better than other people. I'm a righteous man. I'm a religious man. Nobody ever gets saved without grace. You might uh, be keeping the law of Moses. I might be this and that. You can never get saved without, faith, without grace. It says, by grace are you saved through faith. And thank God, grace is available. It will save the vilest of sinners and it will save the most hypocritical of all sinners because the grace of God is sufficient. And look at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. We're talking about this grace. And you're wondering, who is this grace available for? Is this this for you? I said, is this grace for you? Uh -huh. If it's for you, why are you not saved? Why are you not saved? If the water is for you, why are you thirsty and you are not drinking? If the Lord has provided air to breathe, why is it you are a kind of suffocating yourself and you are depriving yourself of what's available for you? Grace is available for you. Take that grace. Look at Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that, look at this, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for, taste death for every man. And what that means is that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. You should have died because you are condemned, because of your sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But then Jesus said, you will not perish. Jesus said, you will not die. Jesus said, that punishment you should take, I'm going to take it for you. And then he says, by grace. Not because you paid any amount of money. Not because you paid any ransom. He said, by grace, I'm going to taste death for you. And he tasted death for every man. Tasted death for every man. Where is the man there? Where is the woman there? He tasted death for you. Why will you perish? Why is it you are going to suffer in hell forever? When Jesus Christ bore everything for you, if you are not saved yet, salvation is available for you today. And it is by the grace of God. I'm looking at Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 11. Titus chapter 2, verse 11. It says, for the grace of God, everybody tell me grace of God. Grace of God. I say shout grace of God. Grace. 
for the grace of God that bringeth, what does it bring? I say, what does it bring? You know, you ask somebody, and you say, do you have grace? Oh, pastor, I have grace. Are you saved? Pastor, not yet. That's contradiction now. Because it says, for the grace of God that bringeth, what does it bring? Salvation. The moment you accept, and you say, Lord, I cannot save myself. I know that you died for me. You tasted death for me. And you were crucified on the cross. And you died on the cross. And you gave your life for me. And because of that suffering that you did for me, I will not perish. That salvation, the grace of God bringeth salvation. And it bringeth salvation. Look at this now. Has appeared unto how many people? Has appeared unto how many people? It has appeared to me. I say it has appeared to me. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us. Grace teaches us. Grace is not quiet. Grace is not silent. Grace is not impotent. Grace is not powerless. The grace of God comes into our lives and it teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly laws we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. Thank God you will live righteously. Because when the grace of God comes in, that grace of God changes us and turns us around. Actually, you know, it makes us strong. If you were weak before, the grace of God will come in and make you strong. Look at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. It makes us strong. You know, some people say, I'm weak. Get the grace of God, you'll be strong. I'm powerless. Get the grace of God, you'll be mighty and powerful. I'm conquered. I'm a victim. Get the grace of God, you'll be a victor in Jesus' name. Be strong in the grace that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're talking to somebody who's just coming into the kingdom. He comes by grace. He enters by grace. And then he's living the life, a righteous life in the kingdom. And he lives that life by grace. And now we come to the minister. He's a member. Now he's a minister. Does the grace of God stop? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I'm reading here from verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 10. It says, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder. You see, that's a minister, that's a preacher, that's a pastor, a shepherd of the church, that's a teacher of the watch of God. And it says, it is by grace. He suffered persecution and then he never gave up. Opposition, he never gave up. There were challenges that came to him in ministry. He never gave up. And you're wondering why. And it is by the grace of God that grace will multiply in our lives. Uh, look up here for a moment. You know, sometimes uh, there are uh, maybe two people are discussing together, and uh, this man is a minister. It's like Paul the Apostle. The Lord has called him and separated him unto the preaching of the gospel. And then he's going through some things, and he's cheerful, he's happy, and his life is, you know, upright, and he's, you know, quite excited about life. And this other fellow is looking at him and he's saying, uh, you know, I don't know how the man is managing because, you know, if I add this kind of challenge, I will crumble. I will collapse. I don't know what will happen to me. You know, he doesn't understand that that Paul the Apostle, everything he did is by grace. And then what God has given you to do, the challenge he has given you to bear, and the burden he has given you to bear, and the work of the ministry has given unto you, you will do it. Opposition will not stop you. Persecution will not stop you. You know what? Because by the grace of God, he was what he was. By the grace of God, you will be who you ought to be. I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 10. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, you are what you are. By the grace of God. You know, some people say, I'm not qualified. Don't talk like that. By grace. 
Some people say, I don't know why I am here. Don't talk like that. It's all by grace. Some people say, I don't think I can achieve that. I don't think I can accomplish that. I don't think I'll be able to make up for that. But look at this. Are you not a Bible believer? I said, are you not a Bible believer? Yes, you are. Look at verse 10. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. You'll see it for yourself. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I can do what he says I can do. By the grace of God, I will go where he says I should go. By the grace of God, I am an overcomer. Always remember that. Don't allow the devil to put you back against the wall. And don't allow anything to come on your life that will crush you. And then you say, I cannot. You can. I can do all things. I said I can do all things. I'm talking for you. I said I can do all things. Through Christ who strengthens me. Your weakness is taken away today. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. That grace will never stop in your life. Uh, that, that's the same why you look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. And we're reading here from verse 16. Hebrews chapter 4. And we're reading from verse uh, 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. The grace of God will hold you up. You will not fall. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. You see, there are people, uh, they don't understand the word of God. Anytime they are weak, they feel ashamed to come before the presence of the Lord. Anytime they are having challenges and pressures upon them, they are beating themselves. They are condemning themselves. How is it? I have been a Christian for five years. I have been a Christian for ten years. Why did I? Why could that happen? How could that happen? Why is it I am not strong? Instead of just saying, come boldly. They come timidly. They come as if, uh, you know, I'm a wretched fellow. I'm not a good at all. I don't know what God will do with me. He'll give you grace. He'll pour more grace into your life. That's why it says, let us therefore come. How? tell me now let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy there's mercy waiting for somebody today and find and find and find and find what are you finding today before you leave here what are you going to find grace to help in the time of of need. We're coming back to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, and I'm reading here from verse 4. It says, Revelation chapter 1 verse 4, it says for, for uh, chapter, uh, chapter 1 verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace unto you, and uh, peace, and peace. That's another thing we need, you know, when you come into the kingdom of God, the very first thing you feel in your heart the freedom, the peace, the comfort inside you there. Because it tells us in Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 5 verse 1. It says, therefore, be justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Like I told you before, it's like water. We need peace every time. A little child needs peace. That's why children cry when there is confusion within, when there is what we call consternation, when there is conflict inside them, when they cannot understand. They cannot understand the environment. They cry because there is no peace. And then as we're growing up, somebody meets you and beats you and does something and you cannot resist and you are so weak. And then since you cannot fight back, you lose your peace. You lose your momentum. You lose your equilibrium. And because of that loss of peace, those children begin to cry. And now you are getting, you are growing up. You take an exam. You fail the exam. 
you lose the peace you're just you're shattered and you're scattered and eventually you get married and then there is something in the family you think the husband will be smiling every time the wife will be smiling every time and honey darling dear whatever but things change that you know the man is frowning and the woman or the woman is frowning you lose peace and then eventually you go to work and it appears that at work you work and they're not giving you your deal you lose peace everything is confusion and then you you're sick and then you say what have I done they're pressuring they're doing this and that you lose peace that's why you are here today yeah. all that loss of peace everything was stop yeah. because it says peace be unto you you see when there is no peace on the stormy sea you are in the boat and everything is topsy-turvy everything is up and down you don't even have the mind to move forward or the mind to do anything if you're going to have progress there must be peace if you're going to march forward there must be peace that's why before we even get to the depths of the revelation it says peace be unto you be calm your savior is the prince of peace there is no storm he cannot stop and there is no challenge he cannot overcome and there is no trouble that he will not take away and there is no mountain he will not move that's why you came here today peace be unto you peace in your heart peace in your home peace in your family and peace in your community when there's no peace, there's no security. We're wondering what will happen. Can I sleep when there's no peace? I lock all the windows, I build all the walls, and I, you know, everything. I'm, I put myself inside the prison inside there because I'm afraid there's no security. But when peace comes, you can open those doors. Nobody will hurt you. Nobody will destroy you. Because as you go, the prince of peace will be inside you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth it, and this peace no man will take away from you. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in him. In his father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, he would have told you. He said, I have good things I'm thinking about you. Be at peace. I will be at peace. Look at uh, Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. It says, And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I thought somebody would say, Amen. Uh, at a time like this, when there's no peace on earth, that's why we need peace. Look at Revelation chapter 6. There's no peace on earth. You know that. Uh, look at Revelation chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 4. Revelation chapter 6, verse 4. It says, And there went out another horse that was uh, red and power, was given him that search thereon to take, tell me, peace from the earth take peace from the heart from the earth and as you you know you go to that street and go to that street and by the time it's a particular time of the day and night is falling peace is taken from the earth you go to the seaside where's the peace you go to the picnic where is the peace you go to the mall you go to the shopping center where is the peace you go to college you go anywhere where is the peace but we'll find the peace in Jesus he is our peace. And when the world is upside down and there's storm on the sea and peace is taken from the earth, thank God, peace be unto you. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. You'll sleep different tonight. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. I'm looking at verse 16. Now, the Lord of peace himself give you peace always yeah. by all means yeah. the Lord be with you all yeah. Let, let's come back to chapter 1 of Revelation chapter 1 of Revelation I'm reading from verse 4 it says John to the seven churches which are in Asia grace be unto you and peace from him which is 
and which was and which is to come. He's talking about uh, the Heavenly Father. He's talking about God. And he says, is him that was, him that is, and him that will ever be. Look at chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4. We're looking at verse 8. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. It says, uh, and the four bees, living creatures, had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, uh, and they rest not, 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 they rest not day and night, saying, look at this, holy, 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 tell me, God Almighty, look at the description, which was and is and is to come. That's God Almighty. And the peace and the grace is coming from God Almighty. And as an express way from God unto you. And the Lord is going to grant you everything in Jesus' name. We're, com we're coming back to Revelation chapter 1. It says in chapter 1 verse 4, it says, And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Ah, that's, that's, uh, uh, how do you understand that? From the seven spirits which are before the throne. I thought there's only one Holy Ghost. You're right. I thought there's only one Holy Spirit. You're right. The Spirit of God. You're right. How is it? It's a seven, seven, seven spirits. I told you before that number seven means fullness, means completeness, means the totality, means the entirety. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 11. You understand it now? Isaiah chapter 11, and I'm reading here from verse 2. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Open your Bible. Are you there now? Isaiah 11 verse 2, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Number one is the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of wisdom, that's number two. The spirit of understanding, that's number three. And the spirit of counsel. You see that? That's number four. The spirit of might, that's number five. The spirit of knowledge, that's number six. And the spirit of the fear of the Lord, that's number seven. It's the same spirit, but it's the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of light. It's all these seven descriptions, the same spirit. That's why it says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 4, and it says from the seven spirits which are before the throne. We're coming to chapter Chapter 1 verse 5 Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 I'm from Jesus Christ that's my savior that's my redeemer that's my healer that's my master that's my forerunner that's the one that died for me it says I'm from Jesus I love that name I said I love that name anytime I mention that name evil powers will flee anytime I mention that name courage will come Anytime I mention that name, miracles will come. Because he is Jesus and he is him yesterday, today and forever. And if he lives inside you, he is mighty. He is strong. And he will conquer every enemy in your life in Jesus' name. Grace is coming from the Heavenly Father. Grace is coming from the Spirit of God. And grace is coming from Jesus who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth we know him is our savior and if you have not known him today is your day he will save you in jesus name we'll come to point number two now point number two the guiltlessness that means no guilt no condemnation no punishment no suffering anymore because he has set you free the guiltlessness and priesthood of the godly we're looking at revelation chapter 1 verse 5 it says in the latter part of verse 5 unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and he has made us kings and priests unto God and his father you see what the Lord has done for us and this is what the Lord will do for you as you come unto him number one unto him that loved us unto him that loved us the love of God will flow into your heart today more of the love of God more of the goodness of God look at this in a, we're looking at Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 unto him that loved us he loves you I said he loves you. Believe that. Believe that. All your problems are solved. 
Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 it says but God who is rich in mercy and for his great love wherewith he loved us his great love wherewith he loved us look up here for a moment uh, you know a boy was concerned and this boy was concerned because, you know, a new child came into the family. He was the first child in the family. And he used to experience the love of the father and the mother because he was the only one. And the father would, you know, hold him up and carry him up. And the mother would embrace him and give him whatever he wanted. If there was any problem, was crying. The mother would, you know, leave everything and uh, take care of him. And then another child came into the family. And the little child did not understand. And then he went sorrowful he went to the mother and said hey, mommy this other child now has your attention how much do you love me like this or like this or like this or like this and mommy replied and said I love you like this how much does God love you because now you see he, he has a, this child and that child and that child how much does God love you he loves you big this is a great love and always remember that he's caring for you he's thinking about you he loves you anything that brings problem on your life he loves you this much and because he loves you that much there's nothing that comes that he will not take away. He will solve every problem. He will destroy the works of the devil. When you come into the kingdom of God, God loves you beyond your wildest imagination. For his great love, wherewith he loved us. And look at this in uh, Galatians chapter 2. Galatians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 20. It says in verse 20, I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. What happened? Who loved me and gave himself for me. He loves you. And then we come to Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1, we're looking at what that love does. It says in verse 5, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Washed us from our sins in his own blood. Because of uh, his love for us, that's why he cleansed us. That's why he washed us. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, we're reading from verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're reading from verse 9. Open your Bible. You'll see what he washed us from. What he took away from us, and he cleansed us by his blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, what verse? Verse 9, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God, be not deceived. Neither fornication, neither fornications, nor idolaters, neither fornicators, sorry, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, and such was some of you, but... But, but, you are washed. And the dirty water that washed you, the water is thrown away. And we don't throw the baby away with the dirty water. The baby is still there. Now the baby is clean. I'm talking about somebody. I said, now you are clean. Because he washed us in his own blood. And there's nothing, no detergent can cleanse like the blood of Jesus Christ. He has washed me. I said he has washed me. In First John chapter 1. First John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7. First John chapter 1 verse 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, tell me out loud, 
cleanseth us from all sin. He did that in his blood. In his blood. Look at Trebele, Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 9. He did it in his own blood. His own blood. In uh, Hebrews chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 12. It says, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by what? Tell me out loud. You don't need the blood of animals anymore. The blood of goats and sheep or chicken or whatever, all that, all that is done away with. There's nothing as pure as the blood of Jesus. Nothing as acceptable to the Almighty God as the blood of Jesus. Then that's why it says in that verse 12, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained what kind of redemption? eternal redemption for us look at verse 14 how much more how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god now you can serve god and then we'll come to hebrews chapter uh, sorry revelation chapter 1 Revelation chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 6. And he has made us, and he has made us, and he has made us, look up here. What's the difference between uh, he has made us or he will make us? He has made us, past tense, it has happened. I said it has happened. Yeah. Don't go around walking like a victim. Like somebody is beating down. Like somebody is impotent. Like somebody doesn't have any treasure. Like somebody is so poor. There are people that come to God when they pray. Oh God, I am here. One of your wretched children. God has no wretched children. One of your downtrodden children. God has no downtrodden children. And one of your unfortunate children, God has no unfortunate children. I am here, I am not worthy. I'm here, I'm terrible. I'm your child, but it's like I'm not as good even as the people of the world. Stop that kind of language. That's insulting to God. He has made us, he has made us kings. And where the word of the king is, there is power. There's authority in your life. Anointing in your life. And whatever you say, if two of us shall agree as touching anything, there's a king standing up there, there's a king sitting down there, and two kings come into agreement. Whatever we agree here on earth, it is done in heaven. I'm talking to a king over there. I'm talking to a queen over there. He has made us. Thank God that's who I am. What he says I am, that's who I am. And what he says you are, that's who you are. Because he has made those kings unto his father. Satan cannot do anything about that. Demons cannot do anything about that. All the powers of the world are crawling on the ground. What can they do about that? He has done it already. I said he has done it already. If you are born again, you are a child of God, you are saved. He has made you king unto the father and under the authority we carry and because we carry that authority we shall reign you reign over your circumstances you reign over the problems of your life and all those things will not be working over you all those things are cancelled tonight in jesus name and then you, you know you know when kings they walk even if you didn't know them before you see the man on the street while everybody is you know they are bending down they are going like this and then somebody comes and he stands up and he looks at everybody as if he owns the whole community and he walks like this you say who is that person and they say don't you know that's the king over here and then when you go out from this place today and those demons are watching and the people that made you bow down before, then you stretch yourself, you square your shoulders and you look up like this and then you walk and you say, who is that? Who is that? Oh, they say, don't you know, he just came from the Bible study and the Heavenly Father has made him a king. And the authority of the Lord will be in your life in Jesus' name. 
the things that defeated you before now you are more than a conqueror you will reign i said you will reign all those problems will come under your feet look at you look at this look at this and understand when you talk you're not just like the old person that is talking that's a new person talking that's a king a talking there heaven will affirm your word look at this in ecclesiastes chapter 8 ecclesiastes chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 4 it says where the word of a king is there is power where the word of a king is there is power there's power tonight there's authority tonight come back to revelation revelation now i'm looking at a chapter revelation chapter one i'm reading verse six it says and has made us kings and priests unto god and his father and that means we're now priests of the lord priests of the lord you talk to God about men. You talk to men about God. You're like uh, the middle man, like a bridge. And then you hold the hand of the man. You hold the hand of God, so to say. And you reconcile men unto God because we're priests unto the Lord. I thought in Lagos Island would say amen. I'm looking at a uh, first Peter, first Peter chapter two, first Peter chapter two, and we're looking at verse nine. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. But she are a, a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you. Who has called you? I am not in darkness anymore. I'm not under the power of darkness anymore. Who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Now I come to point number three. The glory and the power of our God. The glory and the power of our God. Look at verse 6. It says in verse 6. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen glory and dominion forever and ever revelation chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 11 revelation chapter 4 look at verse 11 it says thou art worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power for thou hast created all things and for thy pleasure they are and were created that's why he has the glory jude chapter 1 in Jude chapter 1, I'm looking at verse 25. It says to the only wise God, my God is wise. I said my God is wise. He will not allow anything he knows I cannot overcome to come into my life. He's a wise God and a loving God. And he will apply his love and wisdom in your life even from tonight in Jesus' name. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and ever yeah. Amen. Now, if that is the case that he has all glory he has all power and he has all dominion how are we now to live I look at first corinthians chapter 10 first corinthians chapter 10 verse 31 whether therefore ye eat or drink you don't drink, uh, you know, with uh, hooligans anymore, with, you know, all those uh, people. That your position is different. He has lifted you up. He has saved you. And uh, you are converted. You are a child of God. Now from today, because now, glory and dominion belongs unto him. And through your life, he'll be glorified. Yeah. As I say, through your life, he'll be glorified. Yeah. Somebody will look at you and say, I want to be like that man. Somebody will look at you and say, I want to be like that woman. They'll see the glory of God in your life. The authority and the power. They'll see the confidence and the peace of God. It's like nothing moves you. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And you are a child of that king. And you are a little king over there in your community. And then when any, every need of your life is supplied. 
it gives you peace of mind. It gives you prosperity. And he's saying, until then, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And so there's a way, a person like that, who live, bringing glory to God and there's dominion in your life. You are part of the kingdom. Because you're coming to the kingdom, you're a kingdom citizen. I'm talking to somebody there today. A kingdom city. Look at this, look at this. Whether you, therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Do all to the glory of God. From today, I will live for the glory of God. In the day and in the night, I will live to the glory of God. I will not live like somebody that doesn't have a savior. Because Jesus is my savior. Anybody there? The grace of God be with you. The peace of God be with you. And the position he has brought you to as a king, as a priest, you'll fulfill that position in Jesus' name. Because now you are a king, the word of your mouth is the word of power. Nothing will bring you down anymore. You'll be confident. You'll be bold. You'll be righteous. And tonight, all the things that followed you here, because you didn't know who you were, and you said, they are troubling me, they are troubling me. Now you look back and say, where are they? The king wants to deal with them. Those things are gone already. Rise up and tell the Lord. Rise up and tell the Lord. The king. Let the kings pray. You made a king. You made a king. He gives you authority. And he gives you power. He gives you confidence. And he said, this is who you are. And you are no more bending down and looking down, feeling sorry for yourself. Things are different now. Things are different now. Things are different now. Something happened to you. Something happened to you. A change has happened to you. If you have not been born again, give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. And come into the love of God. Unto him that loved us. Unto him that loved us. And he washed us, washed us, washed us from our sins. He will cleanse you. He will wash you. He tasted death for every man. Every man. There's no discrimination. He loves you more than you can tell. He loves you big. He loves you great. He loves you mighty. And he's thinking about you. He's thinking about you. He loves you. Lord, I thank you. You love me. Lord, I thank you. You love me. Lord, I thank you. You love me. You love me. I accept. I accept. I receive that. You love me. I give my life to Christ. He washes all your sins away. He does it the moment you tell him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He has washed you. He has forgiven you. He has saved you. Now he has made you king. And you can stand in authority and power. Those things that troubled you before, they are now under your feet. Under your feet. You are not a victim, you are a victor. You are not a captive, you are a conqueror. They don't overcome you anymore in the day or in the night. You are an overcomer. You are free. You are free. All your chains are broken. You are no more in the prison. You now live in the palace. God is your father. Jesus is your savior. The Holy Spirit is your comforter. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. 
grace be unto you grace be unto you grace be unto you and peace peace in your soul peace in your spirit peace in your home peace among your children peace with your wife peace with your husband peace when a man's ways please the Lord he will make even his enemies to be at peace with him peace within peace around peace above peace beneath peace everywhere unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us to be kings and priests unto God and his father unto him be glory and dominion both now and forevermore In Jesus' name we pray. You know what God has done for you? He has washed you. He has cleansed you. He has forgiven you. He has raised you up from the dungeon to sit in the palace. You are not a slave grinding at the meal of the unbelievers. You are now sitting on the throne. Amen. Let the kings and the queens say, Amen. Amen. From today, there's authority in your life. Amen. God's anointing in your life. Amen. God's appointment in your life. Amen. Every load they, they told you to carry and you said that you could, what could you do and you carried it, you are dropping that load here tonight. Where are the reigning kings? Where are the reigning queens? Where are the victorious people? Where are those overcomers? Where are those who are more than conquerors? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the revelation you have given unto us. You have opened our eyes. You have opened our ears. You have opened our spirit. There is strength in every heart. Knowledge in every heart. Confidence in every heart. Lord, I pray the real position you brought your people will live there. Everyone will live there in a practical way. In Jesus' name. Everything that bowed your head down before. Everything that oppressed you before. Everything that changed you before. Everything that made you a victim before. Everything that made you sorrowful before. I command, come out in Jesus' name. Incurable disease upon a child of God. Oppression upon a child of God. Persecution that weighs us down in the life of the king. I command all those things that oppress you, all the things that attack you, all the things that will not make you to stand confidently, happily. I command those things come out in Jesus' name. Every work of the devil is destroyed, every chain of the devil is broken. All your fears are taken away. Lord, I pray you grant your people the victory. Every form of sickness and infirmity I command, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, set your people free. Poverty, get away. Prosperity, coming right now. That the people of God will live as God has appointed them. You will have enough. Amen. You will have sufficient. Amen. If there's no job yet, go out tomorrow and get your job. 
marriage, children, whatever it is you need. You are not a beggar, you are not a slave, you are not a servant. You come to the throne of mercy and the Lord will supply all your needs in Jesus' name. Lord, every contrary spirit that will block any of your children here, I silence those spirits. And I command any contrary spirit that will not allow every sin the Lord has ordained for every child of God. I command, go out in Jesus' name. From tonight, O oh Lord, let your people live in victory. Live in righteousness. Live with power. Live with confidence. The glory of God is upon you. The goodness of God is upon you. Grace will never stop in your life. And the peace will never stop in your life. Lord, confirm your blessing upon every life. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Now, be before you go, before you go, you, you, will, you will thank the Lord. You will thank the Lord. You say, Lord, Lord, I know something has happened. 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 You will not remain the same. Things are different now. Don't, don't run away, don't run away. Things are different now. Praise the Lord.